Hi, this is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny. Sometimes Colorado. I got a new setup. Let's see if you guys like it. And today we're going to talk about the roadmap. How about that? Huh? Yeah, actually, this is a nice little roadcaster I got. And I have this beautiful mix board and it came with all these pre-installed sounds and I can entertain myself to my heart's content. In fact, uh, I even have stuff for scary events and so forth. How about that? Um, actually, I wanted to make a quick video and uh, t go ahead and show you guys with my screencasting software a little bit about what I'm thinking about uh, where we're going. So as you're aware, we're starting to finish out Cardano 2020 and we're building some things and uh, you know we're getting it done. So for example, the Alonzo hard fork is coming. Uh, the HFC event will be announced exactly uh, around end of April at the Cardano 360 episode uh, if we can maintain the roadmap that we laid out for you guys. Uh, but it's imminent. You know, Plutus Pioneers is underway. Lots of firms are working. You met some of those firms in the last Cardano 360 episode. And there's an enormous amount of activity on Cardano right now. Tons of NFTs are being issued. All you guys are running. Uh, lots of merry stuff uh, uh, is still going on. I think uh, Cardano assets. Let's actually take a look and see how many have been issued. So if you go to Cardano assets. Com. Right now we have a uh, quantity 18,460 so far created. And remember, it's not exactly the easiest experience yet, and people are just getting started. So it's really amazing to see the uptake of that and how fast network's growing. Uh, so uh, this quarter, peer-to-peer uh, -peer is coming, and um, we're obviously doing all the testnet stuff. And then, you know, next quarter, we'll finish off the last of that 2020 stuff, including we're looking at probably a Genesis event for Orboros Genesis. Uh, so we'll do an HSC to get there. And if not September, a little later, but this year. Uh, and then obviously there's a lot of work to do on Voltaire. But then after Voltaire, we have to figure out where to go, what to do, and you know what's 2025 going to look like. And the purpose of this video is to give you a sense of not only rethinking about it, there's already an enormous amount of work that's been done to kind of pre-chew. And I wanted to make a video to talk to you guys about... Uh, some of the things that I'm thinking about, but obviously our chief scientist has his own agenda, as does the CTO, as does the community, as does others. And right now we're working with a firm. I can't quite announce them yet, but they're a major consulting firm to help kind of pull that whole thing together and do all that stuff. Uh, so without further ado, let's share my screen. Let's see here, share screen. And we should see that whole crazy thing. Wow. There we go. And we'll bring this up. Okay. And we'll go ahead and pull that over here. Put that right there. And there we go. Okay. So I can see you guys. You guys can see me. All right. So no, I don't want to install Git for Windows right now. Stop that. Okay. So we should be able to draw some cool stuff. All right. Let's draw a little circle here. There we go. Okay. So the core of Cardano is Ouroboros. And one of the things that we are exploring is this concept of Ouroboros Omega. So what happened with the Ouroboros research agenda was that uh, we spent a few years thinking about whether proof of stake was going to work or not and showing that it was provably secure. And we achieved that in 2016 with the Ouroboros Classic paper. Now, that paper was not designed for production cryptocurrency. It was rather a theoretical artifact that we could basically construct on top of. Ah, uh, fuck it. I'll just maximize the screen for your guys' benefit because you guys can see me anyway. Okay. But now I can't see you in your lovely chat. Then we followed that up in 2017 with Ouroboros Prouse. So here's Prouse. And that's actually what's running right now. And then we followed that up with Ouroboros Genesis. And that's where we're going before the end of the year. And that was in 2018. Okay. So beyond that, there were many things we looked at, like Ledger Redux is a, a paper. And then there was also Ouroboros Kronos. Uh, and then there was also Ledger Combiners. Uh, and then there's other research that's been done by the industry, for example, Nakamoto Proof of Stake and so forth. So all of this stuff, plus all of the state-of-the-art stuff, is going to be dragged into one gigantic paper, Ouroboros Omega, and this is kind of like the capstone. So all the goodness here is enough for a permanent cryptocurrency with lots of great theoretical properties 
kind of matches and exceeds proof of work in terms of theoretical guarantees. And so your semi-synchronous 51% security bootstrap from Genesis, it has a the, relatively the same consensus model. The only difference is it's 1.6 million times more energy efficient. And also you get a much higher transaction throughput. And actually just off of this, we think that our theoretical throughput maximum is about a thousand TPS on the base ledger. So that's no sharding, no off chain, none of that stuff. That's our window of how far we can push it. But you know, you want things like fast finality. You want things like uh, the ability to easily go side chains. You want uh, no reliance on external clocks. You you want uh, the ability to gracefully recover from 51% attacks, all kinds of stuff like that. And a lot of additional theory, plus uh, a little bit faster TPS. And that's really what Omega is about. And so part of the 2025 agenda is making sure that not only we get to Omega, but then Omega++, plus plus, there's constant evolution iteration on the theory of consensus. Now, we believe that the Omega paper with a prototype is going to be available this year. And this will likely be prior to the uh, announcement about Cardano 2025. Uh, but basically, the idea is that we're going to roll up everything that we've done with Redux, Kronos, and uh, Ledger Combiners, as well as some things we've learned from the industry, because there's so much fertile research with Algorand and other things. And we should be able to uh, to easily uh, match it and exceed what's on market. And Omega is kind of that nice roll up. Okay, so that's definitely a part of the roadmap. Another thing is this concept of light clients. Okay. And light clients have always been an essential part of the cryptocurrency space. And generally speaking, they're easy to do. Euroy is an example of that, but they're easy to do with trust assumptions. Uh, so what ends up happening is that somebody runs a server and that server is going to basically be your window into the system, into the protocol. Okay. So they're the ones that show you how everything works. Uh, and that's how your eye works. You have a, a Chrome extension or you have like a mobile app and they give you some state of the system. And then you make your transactions based upon that view of the system that's given to you. And you have limited ability to check if that state is correct. Now, there are other protocols on market that people are proposing. Like, for example, Mina is one of the most promising of protocols right now and uses very sophisticated, heavy crypto called recursive snarks. And the long and the short is that you have this proof, super cool little proof, that one, your coins that you're seeing exist and two, haven't been double spent. So you don't have the blockchain. In fact, the Mina's case, they're trying to get it down to 22 kilobytes for that proof. You just see a proof, but you know if somebody sends you a transaction that that transaction's right. Okay, so we've been following stuff like that. We've been following what's been going on with bulletproofs, uh, which is a type of snark. Uh, we've been taking a look at what we can do with the uh, stake pool operators. And we have a, something called the Mithril protocol. It's the first time I've ever talked about it, but we've been working on it for quite a long time. And that's also coming out this year, uh, the paper. And my hope is to also have a prototype as well this year. And what we want to do is have a similar trust model where you have a light client by default. So whether you're using Euroy or you're using an other wallet like Daedalus, you start that with that light mode, okay? So you no longer have to have the entire blockchain. You basically just get a proof uh, that uh, coins exist and they haven't been double spent and you know that the state you're looking at is right. So there's lots of optimizations that have to be done to make this happen. And there's a lot of prototyping and careful thought. And there's going to be some new data structures that are put into, let me zoom in a little bit here. It's a little easier to do this on a touch screen. There's a lot of, of new proof structure and data structures that need to kind of be put in. Uh, so new 
ADS, authenticated data structures, new crypto. But we've been working on this since 2018, actually, with the proof of stake sidechains paper. And we've also watched what the industry has been doing. And there's a lot of really cool, really interesting ideas. And we think we're going to be able to bring something very novel to the table. Okay. So Omega is definitely the paper and a prototype. Our goal is to have that this year. Uh, for light clients, our goal is definitely have that paper and some form of a prototype. And what we want to do is move the operating model of all wallets in our industry, the standard operating model to default. Uh, to light. And then if you download something like Daedalus, it'll in the background upgrade over time into a full wallet, but you get instant use and it has a lighter resource footprint. Okay. Uh, so those are two core things that we're really keen, really interested in. So the other thing is side chains. And for a side chains model, one of the research things that we've been doing for a while is saying, okay, if you have your main chain, we call that, and if you read the Y Cardano paper, CSL, and then we say these side chains are CCLs. And CSL stands for settlement. So that's what we're currently all working on. And then the uh, side chains are stand for computation. And we always had this idea that there would be lots of computation chains inside the system. So like EVM, like Yella. And then there would be this idea that over time we could add other computation layers that are domain specific or for new programming models. For example, we'd love to see Catalyst become a side chain. Uh, we'd also like to see maybe you have WebAssembly as a side chain or something like that. Who knows? Okay, so you need rules to add, you need rules to remove or retire, and you also need an economic model. So how will we pay for the maintenance of these side chains? So how pay? Okay. And that's a really interesting, really cool, fun question to kind of cogitate over and uh, prevaricate over and so forth. Uh, and what's also really cool is that these can have different resource models. So in Ethereum, you have this concept of gas. Okay. And you say, okay, that's great, this gas idea, this fuel idea. But what if by holding ADA that there was some way that you could refine ADA through maybe a locking or staking mechanism to get fuel on one of these networks? For example, you know, the, maybe you'll get fuel in the EVM network or you'll get fuel in the Yella network or maybe all of them or something like that. And this is actually something that we're modeling and exploring right now, looking at the game theory behind it. But what's really cool is then what you can do is because you now have different tokens that are associated with these things that ADA will generate, you can have different resource models for these different computational domains. And we can even make the field perhaps expire. So perhaps it has a demurrage or a decay mechanism, or you can actually fix it to a guaranteed operating cost. So these computation layers can actually have different operating costs. What's really cool is that Cardano could be a sidechain of itself. So you could actually have a Plutus sidechain. So you can have Plutus on the main chain and Plutus on the sidechain, but a different resource model for this. And ADA can be used to kind of generate those resources for all these different systems. And uh, we can have sensible rules about adding, removing, and so forth. So this year, uh, we're going to propose a CIP. And actually, I think this is going to be one of the first CIPs that the community is going to vote on for an HFC event to basically update the monetary policy to include incentives to run an EVM, Yella, and Catalyst sidechain, and also include some really cool feel and resource models uh, that'll come. So there's been some really cool things in the industry done with Cosmos and Parachains with uh, Parity uh, and... Um, the uh, Polkadot guys, uh, and a lot of people have some cool ideas. And what we're trying to do is is kind of look at what the industry has done and look at the different arguments. And this is a really nice mechanism design and game theory model. And there's a lot of mathematical finance to do here. But we think that uh, we can converge to a design we're quite happy with. And through the CIP process, we think the community is going to have a lot of fun exploring that. 
And this is how we'll add Ethereum compatibility and yellow compatibility and bring Catalyst into the system and so forth. But then there's going to be very clear rules about how to add, retire, and also pay for these systems as they're needed. Also, this will allow a concept of moving between a permissioned and permissionless system. As many of you know, we've joined the Hyperledger Foundation, and we could definitely propose a permissioned version of Cardano as a Hyperledger project, and it's very easy for us to add that into the system. Okay, so that's another event that uh, we're looking at this year. So, you know, Mithril, and uh, we're definitely looking at Ouroboros Omega, and then, of course, uh, off-chain, there's this concept of layer two infrastructure. And there's really uh, two prominent pieces this year of off-chain infrastructure that we're conducting a lot of work on. One is Prism. And there's a lot of deal flow with Prism, which will be announced. And this is basically did embedding. And this is worthwhile to have its own video. And I'm probably going to do that, talk about all the different things. But that's basically for things like authenticated wallets. You know, authenticated transactions, KYC, AML scenarios, uh, idea of a regulated DeFi space. So you could create a DeFi application, but yet that DeFi application will be somehow connected to a DID, which has been KYC and AML. So there's no central authority controlling it, but it's permission for access to it contingent on you having uh, a certain credential and things like that. And there's hundreds of other use cases that exist with Prism. For example, uh, remember on the roadmap years ago, we said human readable addresses. Well, this is how actually you accomplish that. Because what happens is you'll have a friends list uh, with, uh, with Daedalus and eventually that'll become a standard, a CRC. Uh, and ba basically when you add Alice or Bob to your friends list, what you're doing is you're actually adding their did and the ability to generate addresses on their behalf. So you can have a point-to-point -point perfect forward secrecy communication with them, uh, but then you can also just send money to Bob or send money to Alice, and you get a guarantee that it's uh, the right address because they can have signed addresses and all kinds of cool things. The other piece of off-chain infrastructure is Hydra. And we have a great prototype team on this, and that team is going to present in April what they've accomplished so far. They've really started working heavily in March and they should have some cool stuff to discuss. And there was always kind of a four paper agenda for this. And we are right now deep in the guts of the second paper and we should be able to finish the other two this year. Uh, so paper three, paper four this year. And alongside a prototype. And we designed Hydra to be a graft on layer two solution that the SPOs can run uh, alongside other people. And each channel will enable microtransactions and high throughput for the entire system. So when you write a Cardano DAP, you can use Prism for free. And all that infrastructure is there, it's built in, and your users can have DIDs. And you can use Hydra when Hydra is available. And we think with substantive progress will be made this year and we'll finish it out in 2022. So just Hydra, Prism, Mithril, and Omega alone, I, I think that really makes us not only the best in class, but it really just, you know, pisses all over what F2 is trying to accomplish because we'll have a better resource model with the side chains and always have that. We'll have a beautiful light client experience that enables payments and e-commerce and all these other things and very fast finality with uh, Omega and high throughput and so forth. Uh, and you also will have future proofing for the whole regulated side. But, you know, actually, there's so much more to discuss. For example, uh, quantum resistance is one thing. And I would love to have that property uh, as soon as possible, but that's in scope for 2025. We got to get that done. And that's a huge research agenda. You need a, a quantum resistant VRF. Uh, you need all of the zero knowledge crypto to also be quantum resistant. Uh, you also need quantum resistance with the signature scheme. And then you also have to model what's called a quantum adversary. And there's been some preliminary work done there, but it's an enormous effort. And then also, potentially, how do we use quantum computers to enhance Cardano 
Uh, for example, some of the community members are using quantum computation for random number generation. So that's really cool. They're injecting that randomness into the Cardano network. So there's going to be a big quantum agenda for 2025. Happy little quantum agenda. We're going to have some fun with that. We're really going to enjoy that. Okay. Um, the other thing is on the governance side, there's an enormous amount of work to do linking Catalyst, which is right now primarily concerned about Treasury with Voltaire, which is really concerned about protocol updates. Okay, so these have to be unified together some of that unification will happen in 2021. And then as we go into 2022, that, uh, that unification will be complete. And so the entire HFC system will be further formalized and put under the control of Voltaire. And there'll be a, probably a bicameral voting model. And there's a whole bunch of things like liquid feedback, uh, things like expert ballots and also getting all the economics right and continuing growing the social dynamics. But actually, Catalyst is one of our most successful products in that uh, all the KPIs are being hit fund after fund after fund. But this is a big thing that's going to be growing throughout this year and next year are getting all those components there. But one of the big things that I would like to do is when you create a DAP on Cardano or DeFi, or SoFi, or whatever the hell else <laughs> this stuff is, that if you need voting, if you need a DAO, uh, basically this can become a DAO as a service. So the basic concept is that uh, HFC, uh, that your monetary policy, the update system for your code, all those things, if you issue a token that's connected to it, you can basically assign voting rights and you can reuse all of the voting system that Catalyst has and Voltaire has to handle all of that for you. So what this means is that we're going to overbuild the governance stuff in Catalyst and Voltaire as we think about these things. Uh, so that means we'll add other voting systems like preference voting and quadratic voting and so forth. Because even if we don't use it for Cardano, uh, that's a library that's available for your DAP if you have different governance preferences and so forth. We're also going to launch a research agenda to move from a plutocratic model, which is right now where we're at with ADA, to a hybrid model where we actually have ADA plus proof of merit. And that's a very ill-defined thing. So when we talk about 2025 research agenda, this is closer to 25 than closer to 21, okay? And basically the idea is that you have different resources within the system that will also influence voting, returns, staking, uh, and other such things. And so you kind of need to bootstrap the social dynamics of the system to exhibit that. But then people over time can build identity and reputation and hold a different notion of power in the system. So there's a lot of political science, uh, systems design, and mechanism design, foundational research that has to be done. And you have to do that with the community and something that we're going to all think about. But it's something I think we have to get to uh, because that's the only sensible way of running the system long term. You need to have checks and balances and different power dynamics and so forth. And uh, likely what will occur is we'll see innovation first at the DAP layer as a service using the Catalyst framework. And then at some point through the hard fork combinator process and consent of the governed, we can gradually converge to a more nuanced power dynamic for the entire system. Okay, so huge amount of stuff here, huge amount of stuff on the quantum agenda, Huge amount of stuff on state channels, huge amount of stuff on PRISM, which is the embedded identity system, improvements to ledger rules, metadata standard, all that stuff. Uh, we're going to create a really cool sidechain model, and each of these sidechains bring new capabilities into the system. By the way, the EVM model can be updated to F2, so we can make F2 a subset of Cardano. Thank you, Vitalik. A lot of zero-knowledge stuff to do and cool stuff to do on the light client side. And then obviously we have Omega. Now, there's also another thing I'd like to do. I'd like to move from a Haskell reference client 
to a polygut approach. And that polygut approach have multiple clients. And right now we're actually debating creating a Python reference client. We'll probably keep the Haskell. And then maybe we'll have Rust and others. And then what would be super cool is those are commercial clients, which means they, they have their own business models and they're run by independent companies. But then you have at the core, maybe something like Agda or, or Idris or cock or something like that. And basically this is the new reference and the new reference is not meant for commercial use. It's meant for testing and blueprints. And then basically we can come up with a certification process where you can prove that your commercial implementation certify through some sort of formal method that it's correct. Now, this is going to be a big, big deal in 2022 and beyond. And what's so cool is this creates diversity at the CIP level. And this also creates diversity amongst enterprise versus retail. Uh, and then different boats for different floats. And then what's nice about the reference side is that what you can do is embed inside Cardano itself, its own version control system. And this concept of a core developer can basically be a did that got authorized through a democratic process through voting and those reference schematics those reference code will actually be self-hosted by the cardano blockchain itself so we are our own github people won't be shut out and then there'll be a whole agenda about reliability improving and uh, theoretical properties. So this is kind of the theory and blueprint group. And then in, this is kind of the commercial side. And that's what gets you on Coinbase and gets you into the browser and mobile clients. And because there'll be a nice spectrum of different opinions and different approaches, they can specialize amongst different business verticals. So one of our priorities with the DCF and announcing the Cardano 2025 agenda will basically be how do we ensure that that ecosystem gets developed out. So there's nice checks and balances and so forth. So a lot to think about, and we're soliciting tons of advice from many different people. Uh, we're creating bodies and organizations. We're talking about standards approaches, but this is just a small sample. I wanted to give you guys a sense of it. And when it all comes together, it's going to be this beautiful Cardano 2025 proposal. And we'll have lots of logos and names and other things behind the execution side. And remember, these are all capabilities. We haven't even really talked about commercialization of the platform. So as we see Cardano's Alonzo release, that really gives you a sense of how vibrant and dynamic the ecosystem is. In the case of Alonzo, we have a situation where uh, there are hundreds, if not thousands of independent developers, projects, products, commercial migrations, and other things just getting started. And, and that's that's today. So as we go throughout the year, that's going to only a surge. Catalyst is only going to surge. So there's going to be a lot more diversity and nuance. And really the idea is here is to have a, a combination of organized chaos and a combination of directed effort. So the point of the DCF, the centralized consortium funding, which is what we're going to bring up um, the second half of this year, is the focused effort to build up capabilities and to ensure that the platform stays competitive throughout the years, as well as to have a lot of directed effort towards growing the user base and making us enter new markets that uh, we haven't entered before. Then the organized chaos of Catalyst is the hundreds of millions of dollars every year gets invested across thousands of community projects, and then those grow out a beautiful ecosystem. And part of the interplay between these two will be that the DCF uh, will have special provisions to upgrade the people who received funding and Catalyst to ensure the best possible outcome. So auditability, um, accelerator programs, incubator programs, assistance in growth, assistance in the transition to getting VC capital, all these types of things, okay? So we're really busy. There's probably more than 30 people in my organization and foundation and Mergo 
who are actively just working on this new roadmap, in addition to the 100 plus people who are working full time on delivery of Cardano 2020, that, that entire agenda there. And our entire research group is getting aligned along this way, and we've been scaling resources tremendously. Uh, from our part, IO Global, we're probably this year going to spend at least $15 million on R&D. So we're setting up a lot of new labs, acquiring new scientists, a a augmenting our existing science core, getting new postdocs, more postdocs, more graduate students, and de-risking certain delivery, including making sure that we do prototyping in parallel with delivery. We're also on the commercial side, really scaling up our commercial division. And in Africa in particular, we're definitely going to scale up resources there into the eight figures because uh, there's a lot of good news coming. And I'll reserve that for the Africa special. So uh, make no mistake, we're here to play and we're here to win. And I really love the foundations that we're working with. And I really love the fact that we can tackle exceedingly difficult problems, whether it be quantum resistance or doing light clients properly in a universal way or following a standards-driven approach or uh, client diversity in our ecosystem. And also the fact that we can absorb all of the benefits of our competitors very rapidly, embrace new resource models, have incredible off-chain interactions, including interoperability. And then also we future-proofed our regulatory side. And plus we offer so much to people who build on our platform, like Babel Transactions, for example, or a DAO as a service or the metadata and identity services and so forth, and perhaps much more sensible costing models for running such things. So a lot coming, but I wanted to make a video just to kind of convey to you guys, uh, you know, what is coming and how we're doing this stuff and how we're thinking. Stop sharing my screen and go back. There we go. Uh, and, you know, just give you a sense of how big and vast things are. Uh, and, you know, once Alonzo hits, uh, so much news is going to come out from the monster of the week, the flavor of the week, uh, you know, from you guys, the community, that uh, and it might be hard to compete with it on our side. Uh, so I figure get it out early. Uh, and the second half of this year is really a big discussion about directed effort alongside community effort and how to blend those two in the most productive ways possible. And I believe we'll get there. Uh, but what's really cool is I see a government forming. I see the community really moving in the right place. And I see the investments that we made in protocol design uh, in science really starting to pan out. We're not asking, can it be done? Now we're in the, how would we like to do it? How would we like to refinement, refine it mode? And they were very rapidly able to learn from the industry and borrow things from industry if they're sensible to augment the things that we have. So we don't have to reinvent the entire world and things like that. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So that's a little sample of what's to come. And I hope you guys enjoy my new audio setup. In fact, uh, maybe you'll applaud. Yeah, I can just hear you guys applauding. I promise you I won't do too much of that. <laughs> Uh, and until next time, you all have a wonderful day. This is Charles Hoskinson signing off from Warm Sunny, Colorado.